Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a week of Linux and security news for the 29th of October 2017. Well, starting in the news this week, we have the announcement of what Ubuntu 18.04 will be called, and drumroll please, no, that's going to make too much noise on my desk and pick up on the microphone. Anyway, it's going to be Bionic Beaver. So this is the official announcement from Mark Shuttleworth, and oh, here we have that Ubuntu 18.04 will be a long-term support release. Ah yes, yeah, so a Bionic Beaver for five, or maybe six years. If your fingers bling, pick a desktop. We've defaulted to GNOME. But we're the space where KDE, GNOME, and Mate, and many others come together to give users real and easy choice of desktops. And if you're feeling boned about the lack of Unity in open source, you might want to hop onto the channel and join those who are updating Unity 7 to the newest X and kernel graphics in 1804. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. So they're keeping Unity 7 going. Well, not officially, but some people are keeping Unity 7 going. And we also have the release schedule, so when is a final release? Looks like the 26th of April 2018. Hmm. Okay, we'll be, looking, we'll be looking out for that. Next up we have Linux Mint is dead. No, actually just the KDE version, but that might make an amazing headline, won't it? <laughs> Clickbait much? Anyway, no, it's just the KDE edition. Well, in the current version of 18.3, it will continue to exist, but it'll be deprecated in the Debian and future release of Linux Mint. Do you know, I'm actually not too worried it's going really, because it no longer seemed to offer much in the way of unique features, really. Minty-like features. When I last reviewed it, it pretty much was just a slightly newer version of Kubuntu, so yeah, basically Kubuntu with the back ports. Very little in the way of modified theming, very little in the way of additional applications. Kind of seemed to me to be, what's the point of having this over Kubuntu? And realistically, I couldn't give a very good reason. Mint KD used to be a lot better and did have more of a unique styling to it to sort of replicate the Cinnamon and Mate desktops, but they seem to have dropped that. I think that was before Plasma 5. So yeah, fair enough, it's going. I'll keep him with a bit more news about the Ubuntu 18.04. Well, this one's more about Zubuntu, but the planning and development for Zubuntu. And what are they proposing? Actually, not very much because it is a long term support release. They don't want to make much in the way of changes, they just want a nice stable release. So we have branding or updated logo. They need wallpapers. Yep, that's the same for every distro. Nothing too unique there. Documentation. Even if there is no need to rewrite sections or whole documentation, this time around there are several tasks for the documentation team as well. First of all, it is time to refresh both the installer slideshow and the website feature tour. Nothing has been planned yet, but both of these are at least two years old and in need of a facelift, both visually and in terms of content. Looks like they're going for a fairly basic improvement over the current release. A report from Google's HTTPS encryption on the web. HTTPS relies on encryption technology SSL or TLS to secure these connections. I should hope it's TLS these days. Um, SSL is a little bit old. So encryption across Google, what do we have? 89%. And what's letting them down? Huh, Google Finance. Okay, that's a surprise. In terms of HTTPS usage in Chrome worldwide, so who is the most used? United States, 74% with HTTPS, and yeah, steady decrease to Japan being the lowest. Yeah, it's uh, again steadily increasing. And percentage of browsing time between 84 and 67%. Some more browser news, and this is a blog post from Clive Joe. So, Falcon, formerly Cupzilla, is a cute web engine based cross platform web browser. It has recently become a KDE project, and by doing so, it came to my attention, being a KDE fanboy and all that. <laughs> and no, I didn't write this. After reading many internet articles and watching YouTube video reviewing it, oh, you're welcome, <laughs> I was curious. So the only way of getting it at the moment is for a snap, and that pulls down almost 300 meg in whatever the contents of a snap is, various <laughs> files. 
But as he's pointed out, this is quite large. And if you're running a KDE based system, there is no need to pull down all these packages. So he's got it down to a three meg repository. That's a lot lower, but I will point out that does defeat the object of it running in a sandboxed environment. But okay, if you're just after a browser that runs better in a KDE environment, yes, that's the answer, but uh, you're not gonna get the sandboxing though. I just thought I'd point this out. From the register, Google Play Protect is dead last at fingering malware on Android. <laughs> yeah, good headline. Don't expect the ad giant to stop all the software nasties for you, it certainly can't. So this was a review about how various antivirus vendors do on the protection on Android. And this is an alphabetical order rather than results order, but unfortunately, out of the sample set that they gave it, uh, Google Play for antivirus managed to finger 65.8%. Or more like, well, what do we call this? Real world testing and reference set. So at the reference set, it was actually 79.2%. But interestingly, they've gone for 100% on all the others. Now I'll be uh, interested to see what antivirus vendor can actually finger 100% of malware. Because uh, if you have a look at virus total, yeah, that ain't true. Because the variation on uh, what is actually classified as malware between the 60 odd different antivirus vendors varies wildly. I would say in real world, they're actually about 20% efficient. Maybe that's being generous. So anyway, okay, so Google Play is currently last on the antivirus, but they've likened it to how Windows Defender was in the early days. In 2006, it was pretty rubbish. Nowadays, it's actually pretty good. So maybe in 11 years time, we can expect Google to have done a much better job or maybe quicker. We don't have to all run on Microsoft's time schedules. From the KDE release announcements, there's been a couple of updates to the Plasma desktop. Firstly, the Plasma 5.8 long-term support desktop, which is now uplifted to 5.8.8. So this brings about six months worth of new translations and bug fixes. Uh, there's nothing too major there, it's just a couple of crash fixes. And for the Plasma 5.11 desktop, which is now up to 5.11.2, which like before does seem to be rather quick on development. They must have uh, released it with quite a few bugs and uh, they're now just getting fixed. So again, it's just a few smaller bug fixes, but I haven't actually noticed any changes this time around. The, most of the improvements for me happened in the 5.11.1 desktop. From Softpedia, System76 unveils its first release of Pop! OS Linux, a distribution based on Ubuntu 17.10, and from what I've seen before, this is pretty rich calling it a distribution. It's just a reskinned version of the GNOME desktop. Well, that is currently what it is, but it may turn into something more. So I guess we'll see on that. I did hear mutterings about it being a rolling release. Again, I'm not too certain on that. So anyway, it's just the official release. So it's only available for 64-bit. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's fair enough if all the System 76's computers are 64-bit, which they probably are nowadays. Oh, shall I take another look at it? Maybe I will. And because we're coming up to Halloween, we have some scary Linux commands. Ooh, what do we have? Crypt. Well, you've always got to crypt despite its name. Crypt is not an underground vault or burial pit, but a command to do encrypt files. <laughs> Yeah, it's very nice. Kill, of course, killing a process. Shred, <laughs> thoroughly deleting documents. Zombies, so zombies have a stronger presence on Linux systems. They're basically the remains of dead processes that haven't quite been cleaned away. So one easy way to check your system as a zombie process stumbling around is to take a look at the header lines of the top command. Okay, I wasn't really aware of that one. I haven't looked at it too close. At midnight. Oh, so it's just a one-time cron job. And lastly, daemons. Very good. And for this week's stupid news, it comes from The Guardian. Men photographed in crocodile trapped, dubbed idiots of the century. Wow. <laughs> the whole century, eh? So a group of men photographed swimming into a baited croc trap near the scene of a fatal attack in Queensland appear to be vying for Idiots of the Century award, a local mayor has said. Photographs of the men swimming around and even climbing into the trap at the Port Douglas Marina have surfaced online. 
The pictures of the men frolicking in the water and sitting near the mouth of the trap and the marina were not far from where a previous attack has occurred. The Queensland Environment Minister also expressed disbelief, tweeting the images of the message, Seriously, the meat we put in these traps is bait for crocodiles. Don't swim in them. It's stupid and illegal. It appears they've swum under a sign that says it's illegal to tamper with this trap and put themselves literally where we put the bait. <laughs> nice one. He said it's dumb but not illegal to swim around croc traps. So as far as from what I've read, the men didn't actually tamper with the traps so nothing illegal has happened <laughs> but that's pretty stupid well, that's a week of linux and security news thanks for watching i'll see you all later